Welcome back, baseball fans, to uh, final couple elimination videos. This first one is eliminating the World Series runners up, the Detroit Tigers. Uh, gave it their best, played tough baseball, and unfortunately they lost four out of five, but two of those losses were in the ninth inning. They lost a lost a 4-2 game in there, and another 4-2 game, or 5-3 game. So they lost all four games by one or two runs while winning a 10-1 game. So they, they had a net run differential. What's really interesting about the Tigers and the Mets in the World Series, the Tiger team batting average went from 250 to 253, and their team ERA dropped from 350 to 348. They improved in both areas. And the Mets batting average in ERA got slightly worse after the World Series by a small, small number. <laughs> and the Tigers uh, lose anyway, 4-1. to one. This is a team starved for attention because they played 59 baseball games and finished a game over 500, 30 and 29. When we look at the big guns, Joe Coleman, 11-5 in 138 innings, but he had the lead in the ninth inning of both his starts, and he would be scheduled to start three games in this World Series. I mean... If the magic was still there, Coleman could have tied Juan Marichal with most overall wins. Lolich was a rock. He had two 10-inning starts amongst his seven complete games. Danny McLean was a little disappointing. Continued in the World Series where he lost. 491 ERA is not going to cut it for a 24-win card of 1969. You notice the bullpen actually was pretty good. Hiller, Timmerman should have been used more. He had a buck 65 ERA and a 116 whip. A right-handed pitcher gets righties out. But they had the big three starters in Hiller, and they decided they didn't want to test Timmerman, and that could have been a mistake. Offensively, Gates Brown, of course, uh, but he's a platoon player. He can only play against righties. So he hits 333 and 126 10 home runs. He does half of what, what Willie Horton does a better average. Mickey Stanley was part of that platoon with Brown. He had a great year. Northrop was the all-star. Horton just tore it up all year. Did not get an all-star game invite. Leads American Leagues and Homer and RBI uh, because, again, they were playing 59 baseball games more than anybody else. Uh, Freehand had a nice year. And actually, Elliot Maddox hit above his Stratomatic card average. And Dick Trususki, even at 179, exceeded his Strat card average by 40 points. Probably the most disappointing hitter has got to be Dick McAuliffe hitting uh, 199, leading off. Has plenty of power and on base, but got to get that back at average back up. That was a disappointing year. So let's take a look now at the Tiger stack and see what's going to happen with those 69 players and who's coming back, who's leaving, etc. So when we do this, um, we'll pull all the 69 guys out. And no surprises here. We had one surprise earlier in that Marty Martinez of the Houston Astros the 69 was card was used was the ninth 69 card it should have been a 70 card and that was a mistake that the Astros were fortunate to play with um, so far that's been the only error all right so I see oh boy oh boy boy so big off season coming up we got some we got some big names here in the tiger future and I hope I know at least four guys I want to bring back and I hope there's not more because then that way if there's more than four in that list you just saw it could be picking and choosing who comes and goes. Now the Tigers, they're not bringing back much of an offense. Only five hitters, and they're gonna bring back seven pitchers. So they're gonna roll the pitching staff back. Wow, they're gonna roll, I don't know who the last pitcher will be, I believe. But this is all we got for offense. We got Al uh, free hands or catcher. You have well, Gates Brown's probably more suited to be a DH. Uh, free hands your catcher. Maddox. 
He was forced into duty at short and third because out of desperation. Didn't have anybody else who could play third and short. Maddox, because he's played so much in this uh, playoff tournament, was an outstanding infielder, outfielder guy. Actually played for the New York Mets in that decade, along with the Orioles and some other teams. Great infielder, outfielder, multi-position multi guy in the form of, a, say, a Cesar Tovar kind of player with versatility. Uh, you're, um, and uh, usually could play third and center field very effectively with a good throwing arm, as a matter of fact, as he uh, gets his career going. And he has a long career. He'll play into the early 80s. And here it's 1970, where he hit just 248. All right, Al Kaline is going to uh, take his 70 card back another year, and he'll continue after this. The one good thing about these Tigers is their veteran players play into their mid to late 30s. And Mickey Stanley's best year is right here. So they got a lot of holes to fill in offense. Pitching, they do not. And they are going to bring back... So interesting, what, what just happened, the most ineffective of the starting pitchers was Denny McLean. But you have Coleman, you have Lolich, Les Kane was the four starter, and he's a starter seven, and he pitched very well in the game five of the World Series, and he has some nice stats right here. The entire bullpen's coming back. Members of the White Sox and Expos, and uh, Timmerman was a Tiger. But you see, uh, you would start with the offense, and then decide on if it's gonna be Denny McLean or somebody else with that last pitching spot. So let's see what the Tigers do uh, with their 69 players. All right, let's take a look and see what the Tigers are going to do with their 69 guys overloaded with hitters to review and only one pitcher to review. All right, before we do that, though, I want to just bring this up. I took a peek at the Tigers, winners of the 68 World Series. Lolich was on the mound in Game 7 for that. Didn't get a chance to pitch Game 6 of the World Series we just played, unfortunately. Two years ago, the Tigers won a World Series with a mixture of the the 68 stars like uh, Lolich and McLean and, and uh, Northrup and so forth. But uh, with their 80 stars, Lou Whitaker, Alan Trammell, and um, Jack Morris. So, imagine if because they weren't that great at short and second. Imagine if the 68 Tigers had Lou Whitaker and Alan Trammell in the middle of that infield. So that's sort of how they won the World Series a couple years ago. The 80s cards have been removed, and now we're in a straight timeline. So in 69, the Tigers won 90 games, but it was far a cry behind Baltimore. So if Baltimore goes into a prolonged slump and the Tigers win that division, you have what, it, what just happened, the Tigers and the Mets in the World Series. Um, their top war guys, McLean to Lolich, and Lolich gets it three straight years. And then Hiller and Freehand, Lolich again. All these guys are in play here for the being on the roster. Also, look at the young manager they had taking over uh, a team with a losing record in 70. For 71 and 72, he got him into the American League Championship Series. Some guy named Billy Martin. Well, he was there at Detroit. Ralph Halk was in New York, and the Yankees were playing 500 baseball. And then look what happens later on in the decade. We all know what happens after that between Ralph Halk and Billy Martin. Interesting. Thought I'd bring it up. So we know the Tigers in 71 win 91 games, and 86 and 72 and lose a championship series to the A's. So there's definitely a nice little pedigree here for the Tigers to get back. So let's start looking at players. The first guy is Norm Cash. And we'll look at the age of the player too and look at the productivity because this is really fascinating. Norm Cash. So, makes two more All-Star appearances in 71 and 72. And look at the look at the look at age 37. 37-year-old first baseman with a 903 OPS. And even in at age 39 and 73, it's 828 OPS. So he's going to be around for, for more action late in his career. So that's fantastic. Really great news for the Tigers. But this year, though, 
71. That's the card you want. So under Norm Cash, he of course is a keeper. So he gets 10,000 tokens. I don't know why I don't just say $10,000, but that's technically what we're talking about here, um, his value. Um, so the 71, I'm going to just put an exclamation point there to illustrate that that's the best year to, that he should uh, go to. All right, next guy. Out of necessity, this young man, Kevin Collins, was added to the Tigers. And uh, look at that, he was with the Mets as well. Isn't that funny how the Mets and Tigers have shared some players? Um, so, he was on the 69 expansion uh, Tigers, uh, Expos, excuse me with the card it actually does play for Detroit in 70 and 71 and the question is is there enough participation to grant him waivers he would have to to get waivers you have to have a card for the first year which is 1970 at 24 at bats he's not gonna have a card for 1970 so he has to be retired so Kevin Collins just does not play enough to get a strap amount of card meaning that he is retired next player will be Willie Horton Obvious no-brainer. Led the America League in home runs this year. And I'm sure he's going to have some interesting years to consider here. He's an all-star in 70 and 73. Oh my goodness, though. But if you go all the way to 73, you get a four-year contract. Four years of this card. And a reduced number of games, only 111 games, if he was hurt. He hit 316 with a 501 slugging, 863 OPS. If you look at his numbers, after 68, this would be the next highest OPS year and gets MVP votes, and it's a four-year contract. No-brainer for Willie Horton. The other good thing about it for Horton is that's a different year than the cash year, right? They're not competing for a specific year. So that means that uh, you still can take another 71 and 73 player in the draft. Next guy is McAuliffe. Really like this guy. He had a disappointing batting average. But it's interesting because, you know, later on, of course, they would have Lou Whitaker playing second base, left-handed hitter with power. But McAuliffe was Mach 1 of that. Some great years in the middle here. Longtime Tiger. Played his entire career up until 74. Look at that. Um, so here we are with McAuliffe in 69. Um, a 262 card. 70, he walks 101 times but only hits 234. But it's the 73 card I really like. OPS over 800. Hit, hit, ability to hit lefties and righties in a 274 average. So McCullough's coming back. And I'm going to put 73 again. That's a four-year contract. That's If you can find a good guy with a four-year contract, you want to do it. If you, can get your, if you can get core players of your team four years into the future, you do it. Because, you know, the guy in the first year you sign, you're only going to have him for one year. So even if you take a 1970 player who isn't any good... It's only one year, and then, you know, it's a, like a one-year mistake. You don't have it for four years. But these four-year into the future guys, you know they're not mistakes. In the case of Horton and McAuliffe, you'll be glad to have those guys for four years. Next player is Jim Northrup. Another player that, and we're getting to the point now where we got to think about our pitcher. Uh, another guy who plays well. As he gets older. So here he is moving into his prime. And 73 is, is his best year at 832. But you already know that Horton and McAuliffe are going to have better years. So what I would say is you go, go with a 71. 
or the 71 really and then once those years are expired then you can bump them up to the 73 so Northrop's coming back he's a, he's, he's a potent part of this team and most importantly we don't have to make a decision of the year yet of course most importantly, it makes sense. You see, he's a Tiger through 74 anyway, as is McAuliffe, as is Horton, as is Cash. So it's not like these guys are foreign to playing for the Detroit Tigers. All right, so we've got four keepers and a retiree. It's gravy at this point, and potential heartbreak if we have to decide uh, which longtime Tiger may have to be traded. So that's always an option as well. Roseboro was acquired to give a lefty option with Freehand behind the plate. By the end of the year, Freehand just played, was the everyday catcher. And you notice that uh, Roseboro does not have a connection with the Tigers, so he's a, definitely a candidate for waivers. But to get waivers, he has to participate in 1970 with the Washington Senators. So let's see if we can do that. So we're going to have to find the 1970 Washington Senators Roseboro. So I'm going to go to this great website, superds.tripod.com slash somrosters.html. Gary's roster page. He's got all the PDF rosters here. And we want to see if there's a 70 Rosebro on Washington. The Washington Senators. And they went with Paul Casanova and Jim French. And let's see if they, they took a third catcher in the extra players. No, they didn't. So, Washington does not take Roseboro, or I should say Stratomatic. Stratomatic does not print John Roseboro's card for 1970. Which is a 233 card, which it wouldn't be a bad card. But they didn't print it. You see, his only team in 70 was Washington, so you know there's no other card anywhere. So, we're going to have to retire Roseboro. That's a shame. I like to get guys on waivers before I retire them. You can kick a wavered player in retirement. It's almost impossible to kick a retired player in a waivers. All right, last hitter to review, Dick Trususki. He he deserves his own video. After being thrust into the spotlight in <laughs> the playoffs for the Tigers, uh, he had a big. He had a couple two out two run singles off of Jerry Kuzman. He helped them beat the Red Sox, but he also made some key defensive miscues. So you see what happened here. The Tigers were already moving on to him in 69, you know, because of the batting it was so down. But I needed this card because I, there was no other shortstops. And I had to find a shortstop for Detroit so we could play the season. There was nobody because... Uh, uh, I, I push this notion that Aurelio Rodriguez and Ed Brinkman, guys who played third and short for the Tigers, you could find better than those two guys. Well, guess what? I was wrong. <laughs> and Rodriguez went to an expansion team that went to the playoffs, and uh, Brinkman is just going to stick around with the Washington Senators, Texas Rangers, until his career's over. So, Detroit's got to figure out a long-term solution at shortstop. You know, they won the World Series a couple years ago because they had some guy named Alan Trammell playing shortstop in the Mixed Era League. So Trzuski is definitely retired. He doesn't play in 1970. So we got four keepers, three retirees, and now it's Denny McLean's time in the sun. So, nice little long appreciation video for Denny here. Um, we'll go all the way back to 67 and 68 here. So there you go. 31 game winner in 68 with a ring. And in 69, what is the, does he win the Cy Young here? Oh. It's MVP. Where's the Cy Young? No, Cuellar gets it. Are they tied? Are they tied? It says A.L. Cy Young voting and Quayer McLean both have the same number of votes. Maybe they tied. I don't know. Oh, anyway, let's go back. So, this is the great year we just had. And looking forward, after 69, 
And this is the consideration, 70 to 73. And I think it is time to say bye-bye to Denny McLean. Now, you can do it through waivers. You could pass him through waivers if he has a 70 card with 91 innings for the Tigers. He should. Let's go look at the Tigers again and see if McLean is here. He is. So, after pitching and losing a World Series game, he gets called to the front office and said, Denny, we're not bringing you back next year. And I'm sure that must have been a not a, a fun conversation. Um, so McLean will find the Washington Senators, the Oakland A's, and the Atlanta Braves to take a chance on a guy who won 55 games in 68 and 69. So turned out to be pretty easy for the Tigers. Really cool. They know the four keepers they want, and really the waiver retiree is just procedural. They'll trade one of their retired guys for another team's waiver guy. Obviously, these are the guys you bring back, and you don't really care too much who is on waivers and retirees, as long as you have the correct number of four, two, and two. So the Tigers will make one procedural move in the offseason, but otherwise, they're ready to run this thing back next year. All right, thanks for checking out this Eliminating the Tigers video. We've got one more to do for the world champion uh, team, and we'll get to that soon. Thank you.